Hello and welcome to episode 17 of my retrospective look at TT Games LEGO Games of the Past. Hopefully you've had a chance to watch some of the other episodes in the series, but if you haven't and this is your first time, then head over to our YouTube channel or lifeinbrick.com for the full series. Now also don't forget to subscribe and also share your favourite parts in the comment section. After bringing the series back a couple of weeks ago with another trip to a galaxy far, far away, it's time for something a little bit different. Now, if you're watching this, there's a good chance that you're a LEGO fan. I mean, who isn't? Uh, and there's an even better chance that you're aware of a little movie at the cinema right now, the LEGO Movie 2, the second part. Now, I did do a review of this movie, and I'll put it up on our YouTube channel, but after Warner Brothers decided to copyright some of the segments that I used, um, I decided to delete the video. Um, rather than let them monetize my video, that is. Um, you can go and read the full review on lifeandbrick.com, though, if you are interested. Spoiler alert, I enjoyed it. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yes, uh, Lego Movies. Now, the five-year gap um, in Emmett's adventures were far from empty, with two spin-off movies hitting the cinema, the Lego Batman movie and the Lego Ninjago movie. And while Batman was given his own movie add-on for Lego Dimensions, the ninjas were treated to a full game to accompany the movie, the Lego Ninjago movie video game. Quite a mouthful. Now, I'd be lying if I said that I had been an avid follower of Ninjago over the years, um, but I more than familiarised myself with the artist Spinjitzu ahead of the movie and the game release. I wanted to make sure that I did Lloyd and the crew the best justice I could with this review. So, released in 2017, the Lego Ninjago movie follows the continuous adventures of Lloyd, Naya, Zane, Jay, Cole and Kai. I hope I've pronounced all those correctly, as they work as part of a secret ninja force protecting Ninjago City from the evil Lord Garmadon, who just so happens to be Lloyd's dad. Now, following the return of Master Wu, the team learn of an ultimate weapon which can be used to destroy the evil Lord once and for all, which turns out to be a laser pointer which can call forth Meowfra, a live action cat, yes. Yes. <laughs> now, despite Wu warning the team never to use the weapon, Lloyd inadvertently seals the ninja's defeat by using Wafra against Garmadon. Luckily for Lloyd, there is an ultimate, ultimate weapon out there which can defeat Meowfra and save Ninjago City. And so begins a quest to retrieve the weapon. I'm desperately trying not to give away any spoilers uh, for those of you that haven't seen the movie, but much like the Lego movie video game, this game is kind of almost scene for scene what you get in the movie. Now one of the great things about utilising Lego's own themes is that TT Games have already got head start in for environments, characters and vehicles, or in this case, awesome mechs. And with the movie thrown in as well, there was a lot of source material to work from to get this game just right. Now, where the movie received very mixed reviews, however, the reception for the game was largely positive and for good reason. It's a great game. It had, it's actually a high point in the continued evolution of TT Games LEGO games. Now, let's start with the bad, however. It's a pretty short game, in terms of the story point of view, at least. There's 14 levels in total, and you can run through that fairly quickly. Now don't get me wrong, it's a really enjoyable story, it's just very short by LEGO standards. Now lifting scenes straight from the movie to bookend the levels, you're actually getting a lot of the movie thrown in to drive the narrative, but while key scenes are provided for inspiration for the environments, the gameplay is within the levels is way beyond the kind of movie. Now, much like 2018's Lego The Incredibles, however, the densely populated open worlds in this game more than make up for the linear story's very short runtime, with multiple environments to explore once you've saved the world from a giant cat. Now, where the game really shines, however, comes in a mixture of the two, the open world and the story, as the integration between the two is almost seamless. If it wasn't for the cutscenes, it would be for the most part. Now, almost all of the level environments are fully explorable as part of the open world, and it works exceptionally well whether you're in the middle of a battle-torn Ninjago city or a so-set mountain top. The mechanics of the game for the most part work in the same way as any other LEGO game you've played before, but given this unique group of characters, TT Games have really embraced the source material with regards to the skills and abilities of the core group. Each of the ninjas has a unique skill that they bring to the team, usually driven by their weapon of choice, though progression through the game unlocks more elemental skills, which can change up the gameplay considerably in the second half of the story. Now, one of the most exciting aspects of this game, and one that works extremely well given the theme, is the combat system. 
easily the most sophisticated combat mechanics ever introduced by TT Games in a LEGO game. There are defined combat styles and moves which can be executed with a combination of buttons. It's so much more than the LEGO standard button bashing. In addition, the Wall of Ninjuity allows you to unlock new moves as you progress through the game. I hope I pronounced that right. Combat is unsurprisingly a big part of the game in general, with side missions and challenges testing your skills. In addition to the standard LEGO game co-op experience, the Ninjago movie video game also includes Battle Mode, a concept introduced in LEGO Dimensions. It's essentially a four-player split-screen tournament with a host of environments to battle your friends in. Now, another innovation here is the removal of one of the staples of LEGO games since LEGO Star Wars started. Uh, gone are the level stud counters. There is no target stud count per level and instead we get a clever new concept where the total accumulation of studs helps you to level up and unlock collectibles. So it just rolls over into the next level and in the open world. It's nice to see TT Games trying something new and while it hasn't caught on with the games that have followed, it works really well and it still encourages you to utter destruction of everything you find for those precious studs. Now moving on to the character roster and while it's nowhere near the size of flagship LEGO games like Star Wars, Marvel and DC, they've changed things up a bit so collecting characters isn't uh, about getting the character studs that you can find in the open world or in levels, it's with minifigure packets which you can, be, you can buy and can be unlocked through the game through challenges. It's actually an idea that they've used in LEGO The Incredibles as well, it's, it's just one of the many things that just breathes fresh life into the LEGO franchise. Graphically, this game is fantastic. The environments are packed to the brim with Ninjago and any fans of the series will be more than satisfied with the look. The ambition of the game, however, occasionally outweighs the technology and with so much going on on the screen, there are rare times when the frame rates drop considerably, at least on the Xbox and PlayStation versions of the game. It's a worthy compromise, however, because it is a really detailed and colourful, it's, it's so alive, the environment, that, you know, you, you forgive the odd blip. Anyway, overall, I'm pleasantly surprised by this game. This is the first game in this series that I hadn't played previously, and playing it now for the first time, it's been a very enjoyable experience all round. Now, every now and again, TT Games takes a big chance and tries something new. Sometimes they fail, Indiana Jones 2 is a perfect example, sometimes they succeed, and the LEGO Ninjago video game definitely falls into that second category. A wave of innovations is a risky thing for something that's 12 years old, this franchise is 12 years old essentially, and it's one that's worked exceptionally well here. While the movie may not have blown fans away in the cinema, the game was certainly pleased Ninjago fans. As I said at the start of the video, however, I'm not an avid fan of the theme, and so given that, I've enjoyed every minute of this game. So I would urge anyone that hasn't visited Ninjago City before, give it a try, you won't regret it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed my structured and passionate rant about this game. Please do leave a comment and let me know your thoughts on anything discussed, um, and also let me know what you think of the game in general, what you think of the movie, uh, and please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Next in the series, coming in the next two weeks, I'm heading back in time for an adventure with the greatest archaeologist of all time. Having reviewed Indy 2 very early on in the series, I finally got my hands on Indy 1, so I'm going to go and play that, so grab your whip and your fedora, because that's where we're going in two weeks' time for the retro review treatment. Anyway, for now, please do subscribe if you haven't already, and thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.